Dial gauges are a tool that we use for measuring travel. The way a dial gauge works is you will apply the pointer against whatever it is you want to move and as it pushes against the dial gauge the needles will move. Now there's two needles on a dial gauge. You have the large outer needle and then you have a smaller inner needle. On this particular dial gauge, this has a 10 millimeter range. That means that 10 revolutions will equal 10 millimeters of travel. Now, the inside gauge, this smaller one, is designed to count total revolution. So when I bring it around on one full revolution and I'm back to zero, we can see that our little tiny pointer is pointing towards one and then so on and so on as the more I press it the more it reads. Now the outside needle is measuring in 0 0.01 of a millimeter increments. So when the needle moves this much we are moving approximately 0.2 of a millimeter. Usually the specification for the dial gauge will be on the face of the gauge. So for instance this one is 0 0.01 and that's the tolerance of the gauge. Now these can be used in a number of different methods and manners. This particular one is on our Z block and the Z block is used on a 911 engine when we're setting our valve timing. So when we are using it in a valve timing application, we're going to preload the gauge because the valve is actually going to be pushing down. So you want to make sure that the valve the uh, dial gauge can move up and down freely. You don't want to have it pinched up against the side of the cam box. You also want to have it as far over as you can because as this rocker comes down it's going to pivot somewhat. And then we want to just go ahead and tighten our retainer down so our Z-block doesn't move around. Everything has to be fairly rigid to make sure this operation is done correctly. When you preload the gauge, it's important to look at what your inside number is as well as your outside number. Because as the needle moves down, if you come to exactly the same point again, you can get confused and not understand um, how far it's moved. Whereas if we look at the inner gauge, we can see we've moved two millimeters. Dial gauges are almost always used in conjunction with other tools. In this particular tool, we have the differential tool for setting up pinion depths on 901s and 911 transmissions. This one has a needle or a pointer that is going to contact the pinion gear and that translates to a rod inside that pushes on this dial gauge. So the way we use this dial gauge is we take a depth tool and apply it to our gauge at this end and then we will zero our needle right here. Now it's important once again is we need to keep an eye on what the inner gauge as well as the outer zero gauge because if we turn out to be exactly one millimeter out either way we can be on zero but be on a different depth. And then we can see if I move our gauge how much we are away from our target size. Another of the most common uses for a dial gauge is measuring shaft runout or shaft bend. So I've got a distributor shaft set up in a V-block and I'm using a magnetic base. That magnetic base is doubling as retainment for my shaft and I've got my dial gauge set up so I'm perpendicular to the shaft that I'm measuring and I want to be as close to 90 degrees as I possibly can when I'm measuring the shaft to get the most accurate measurements. So once I've got my shaft set up in my V-block and I've got my dial gauge, I've given it approximately 10 millimeters of preload on this one. This one is a 0 to 25 millimeter, so that means it's a long range measurement. I'm going to pick my needle up and just drop it a couple of times, make sure it's settled on the shaft and then I want to twist my dial until I am zeroed. The next part is I'm just going to rotate the shaft while keeping it held down in the V-block and measure any deflection that I have. 
And as we can see on this one, we've got about 0 0.02 of a millimeter worth of deflection. Now, this can also be done in the vehicle for brake rotors or spindles or basically anything that rotates in the car. The most important part when you're measuring this kind of uh, run out or this in the vehicle or on the bench is making sure that the dial gauge is secure. So this one being the magnetic base, the magnetic base is clamped onto our V-block. And then I've got our brackets as close and as tight as I possibly can. If we have a lot of flex, you can see with just small amounts of movement how much effect that's having on the dial gauge. So you want to make sure that everything is as secure as possible. Now, magnetic dial gauge blocks are designed with a switch. So if we have on steel, these are a heavy block and they're designed to be locked in place so you can make measurements on different items. When the switch is turned off, they're easy to maneuver and you can get them positioned. When you flick the switch over, it turns the magnet on or allows it to have its full strength and we can see now it's picking up the entire V-block. The base is also has a V-shape in it. This is designed so if we have something like a strut tube that we need to clamp on, so if I were measuring run out on a brake rotor, I would be clamping it to the strut tube using this part of the magnetic base. Another way of using a dial gauge to take measurements is using it as a comparator. So I've got this set up in our height gauge and I'm going to be comparing two pistons. And this is pretty much the same as you're going to use a dial gauge in any other manner. First you're going to bring under the piece that you want to compare it to. And you want to make sure that you've got a good preload. So right now I'm at a three millimeter preload. And if this is my center or this is my design gauge that I want to compare to, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this one set so when I'm making my measurements that I am the I want to zero out, I, I'm going to zero the gauge right there. And then I just want to make sure that it's going to not exceed that zero point. So this is my maximum amount of deflection I'm willing to absorb. Then, if I want to compare my second piston and see where it is at in comparison to the same size, I can bring it in and I can see on this particular one that it is actually 0 0.03 of a millimeter larger than our base setup. To sum it up, dial gauges can be used in lots of different ways to measure different amounts of travel. We've got a couple of other ones here. They're all, the dial gauge portion is still going to be the same. This is one we use in our mill for using measuring run out. So this one has an arm that is positioned against a round surface and then it allows us to rotate the spindle while looking at the actual dial gauge. This type of dial gauge is designed for measuring holes. Once again, you would use a mandrel or you can set this using a micrometer with a known distance and then you could install it into a bore and measure for differences in bore size. So there's a lot of different uses for a dial gauge. Once again, it takes a little bit of practice to use and to get them set up the first time, but all in all, they're fairly easy to operate.